सब्सक्राइब नाउ एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन नेवर मिस एन अपडेट हेलो इन दिस वीडियो वी विल एक्सप्लोर जॉन रेडनस पोइम मैकफिलिक नो बट ड्यू टू इट्स लेंथ अ लाइन बाय लाइन एक्सप्लेनेशन इज डीम्ड चैलेंजिंग इफ नॉट इंपॉसिबल सो द वीडियो विल फोकस ऑन की टॉपिक्स रिलेवेंट टू द पोइम aiming to provide viewers with a comprehensive understanding so let us start with its title that is macfilino a satire upon the true blue protestant poet ts macfilino is a fictional character who represents richard filino a poet and a playwright you should remember here that richard filino was satirized by andrew marvel in his poem filino an english priest at rome the poem mac filino includes the subtitle a satire upon the true blue protestant poet ts the subtitle clearly targets thomas shadwell portraying him as the heir to a fictional kingdom of dullness represented by his association with richard filino an earlier poet already satirized by andrew marvel and disliked by dryden in this poem The aging king uh, Philicno decides to pass on his throne to Shadwell, who is portrayed as incompetent and lacking literary talent. John Dryden extensively uses comparisons and contrasts to mock and criticize his targets. Let us understand them one by one. The first comparison is Shadwell and Richard Philicno. The poem begins with a comparison between Shadwell and Richard Philicno. Philicno, having ruled as the king of dullness, is passing on his kingdom to Shadwell. This comparison sets the tone for the entire poem, portraying Shadwell as the successor to the kingdom of nonsense. Thinking about a suitable heir among his sons who would engage in a ceaseless battle of wit, Philicno ultimately concluded that Shadwell alone shared such traits entirely and was the most fitting successor to his kingdom among all his sons Shadwell alone possessed foolishness even from a very young age next dryden compares shadwell with other poets dryden uses comparisons to other poets of his time to emphasize shadwell's lack of poetic skill For instance, he suggests that even poets like Haywood and Shelley, who were not considered highly skilled, were at least better than Shadwell. This reinforces the idea that Shadwell represents a decline in poetic quality. Next is Shadwell and Knight. Shadwell is compared to the Knight. This comparison serves as a metaphor to emphasize Shadwell's dullness, lack of creativity. and insignificance in the literary world just as night is associated with darkness and the absence of light shadwell is portrayed as a poet lacking the brilliance and intellectual depth found in more esteemed writers then we have shadwell and oak trees the speaker compares shadwell to big oak trees that give shade The comparison suggests that Shadwell is a bit thoughtless or unaware, similar to those majestic oak trees. Even though they provide shade in a grand way, it is as if they do it without really thinking or caring. This metaphorical comparison paints a picture of Shadwell as a lazy and indifferent ruler in the realm of dullness, emphasizing his lack of active engagement in the art of poetry. Then we have shadwell and arian the comparison between shadwell and arian highlights the stark contrast between them arian a mythical greek poet and musician is celebrated for his artistic excellence and virtuosity on the other hand shadwell being mocked in the poem is portrayed as a mediocre poet lacking the poetic qualities and skill attributed to arian Then we have Shadwell and fishes. John Dryden employs the metaphor of fishes to satirize Thomas Shadwell. Dryden compares Shadwell and his poetic works to a school of fool fish swimming in the Thames. This metaphor serves as a satirical commentary on the perceived lack of depth 
creativity, and intellectual merit in the Shadwellers' poetry. By likening Shadwell to a group of foolish fish, Dryden mocks Shadwellers' literary contributions, suggesting that they lack the substance and depth found in more esteemed poetess. The choice of the aquatic imagery adds a layer of humor to the satire while reinforcing the idea that Shadwell's work is shallow and unimpressive, akin to a school of frivolous fish swimming aimlessly. Then we have mock heroic comparison. Throughout the poem, there are mock heroic comparisons that elevate Shadwell's mundane qualities to epic proportions. For example, he is described as the great equalizer of mankind through his dullness. These exaggerated comparisons add a layer of humor to the satire. Then we have imagery of Shadwell's coronation. The entire poem employs imagery of a grand coronation for Shadwell, mocking the epic tradition. This comparison serves to exaggerate Shadwell's lackluster qualities, presenting them in a larger-than-life and ironic context.